So we should be all good there. And let's just get right into it. So hi, everybody. Thank you so much for attending today's Codex Quality Measures for Cancer public call. My name is Anthony Dignato, and I coordinate the Quality Measures use case, uh, as well as many other representatives from the use case team will be presenting today. Uh, the project kicked off just a little under a year ago, and the team is very excited to share the significant progress we've made since we officially announced our use case back in August of 2022. Uh, for today's agenda, we'll start with a brief background of Codex. Then the intelligent team will take a deeper dive into the quality measures use case, better defining the use case workflow, the technical development and testing process, and an overall overview of the project scope. Then we will discuss the use case team's recent results of completing phase zero, which we'll get into a little bit more detail during the presentation, and which will be accompanied also by a short demo and a summary of lessons learned. And then to close out, members from the ASTRO and ASCO team will highlight recent use case successes and officially close with a call to action for participants on the call. And we intend to leave about 15 minutes uh, for any questions or comments that everyone uh, on attending today may have. Okay, so to provide a quick overview, the Codex HL7 Fire Accelerator was originally created by HL7 to foster a community of leading healthcare organizations to accelerate the adoption and implementation of M code and related fire standards. And while Codex originally focused on oncology data standards, the interests and collaboration from our Codex member community allowed Codex to expand into two additional clinical domains. So as you can see here, we branched into cardio, cardiovascular and genomics and has evolved into the accelerator really to support and catalyze standards across clinical specialties. So to date, we have 10 active use cases within Codex, seven of which are in the oncology domain because it was originally oncology focused and many use cases were spun up because of that. The seven oncology focused use cases look to create solutions, leveraging fire standards to improve pain points related to clinical trials, radius and therapy treatment, prior authorization, registry reporting, REMS drug reporting, and our use case of interest today, quality measures. The traction and progress we've made from our oncology focused use cases has spun up community interest from other clinical specialty areas. And we've worked and championed with other organizations to spin up use cases in cardiovascular around hypertension management and two genomics focused use cases around genomics operations and genomics data exchange. And so all of these use cases across the domains under the same Codex community really look to articulate Codex's vision of collecting patient data once to reuse for multiple purposes. So for a brief example, if a patient's radiation therapy treatment data is collected in a radiation oncology information system and then exchanged via Fire API to another electronic health record that is able to accept and store this Fire data, then another endpoint that might be interested in a radiation-focused quality measure, for example, could take that necessary radiation data, couple it with other available Fire data in the electronic health record, say demographic information, and use that collective information as the complete set of standard data for quality measure evaluation and reporting. So as you can see, all of these use cases we're trying under Codex to uh, blend into one picture of collecting it once and being able to use for, for any purpose in the healthcare ecosystem. And lastly, I just wanted to note, the Codex community recognizes that in order to get widespread adoption and implementation of fire standards, you need to test the proposed solutions in clinical practice and receive feedback from users in a real world clinical setting. And this is why all of our use cases and the teams under Codex have an eye toward implementation and execution uh, and executing the proposed use case solutions as part of pilots in the field with patients, providers, and other future users to demonstrate impact and feasibility of the standards being developed. So that's just kind of a, a brief overview of Codex in general. Now I'd like to turn it over to Becky Metzger from Telgen, who introduced the main topic of today's call, the quality measures for cancer use case. Thanks so much, Anthony. Um, my name is Becky Metzger from Telogen. I'm a senior health informatics manager here at Telogen. Um, and myself and Gail Winters will be um, doing the, the first part of this presentation. So if we can go to the next slide, Anthony, we wanted to start with giving a little bit of background related to the quality measures for cancer use case. Um, we 
wanted to provide the overview of the use case, the challenge within the oncology community this use case team identified, and the objectives for solutions to these challenges encompassed within the scope of this use case. We'll also review how our team hopes this may positively impact the broader community in the long term. So first, we wanted to ensure we had clearly defined the problem we're attempting to address with this use case. We identified this problem as significant constraints on the development and authoring of digital oncology quality measures due to an ecosystem of disparate and unstructured data, as well as a lack of di digitalized collection and oncology models to support interoperability. Our objective is to create a solution that demonstrates the ability to author evaluate and execute digital oncology quality measures using FHIR and the MCO data model. We hope this solution will assist with the ability to expand programs that are focused on collecting meaningful oncology quality measure data using FHIR and MCODE models to provide meaningful um, high quality oncology care with significantly less burden to clinicians. We hope to demonstrate the ability to author new and more meaningful measures to clinicians when historically there has been these constraints due to lack of the structured oncology data. Those are some lofty goals for our team. So um, that's, that's the overview. Anthony, if you can go to the next slide. Awesome. So this um, slide just shows the current members of the use case team for the uh, cancer measures. And so we have ASCO, ASTRO, Evernorth, Telogen, MITRE, and Centennia Park. Um, so this highlights our amazing team, which includes obviously clinical specialty societies who are also cancer measure stewards, clinical experts, solutions and technology companies, and vendors with payer partnerships, as well as our use case leaders um, and coordinators. Anthony, if you can go to the next slide. Okay, just to dig into this a little bit more from the previous slide, to address these challenges and work toward the solution identified in this use case, this team is dedicated to this effort to improve quality cancer care and to using FHIR and MCODE to reduce burden. The current use case team members, who include those that I just listed, um, have been coordinating across our teams in order to develop these solutions to identify areas um, of gaps that we want to address um, and to make sure that we are covering different aspects of oncology care. Um, in addition, we've been coordinating, as Anthony mentioned earlier, there are um, other active codex use cases. We've been coordinating with some of those other use case teams, such as the radiation treatment team to leverage their work where we find synergies between the use case teams. And next slide, Anthony. So we're gonna get a little bit into kind of our process from our use case perspective and explain a little bit as we talk about um, some of our phases that we are using within this team. We wanted to make sure that we were taking a systematic approach in this use case. And so we've identified this phase of the approach to our testing and implementation. In phase zero, we selected one existing MIPS measure and two additional ASCO measures to convert to FHIR using MCODE extensions. In this phase, we created measures which extract patient data from MCODE profile resources. We created FHIR transaction test case bundles and loaded to a FHIR clinical data repository and authored supporting libraries as needed. Finally, we executed the measure and provided the results by a reporting. Um, this will be demonstrated later in the presentation. This was our initial pilot to demonstrate that conversion of oncology measures to FHIR using MCODE extensions was feasible, henceforth why it's phase zero. Um, these measures were medical oncology focused measures. And so that's what we'll be demonstrating later today um, as, our, as we've completed phase zero. We have then, um, and you can see in kind of small print, we have kind of a, a half phase between each phase. Um, and in these half phases, specifically in, in phase 0 0.5 that um, we have just completed, we work with our use case team members to identify additional measures for the next phase of development. Um, and they're taken uh, for our phase 0 0.5. These are taken from ASTRO, um, from measures that they develop for the Veterans Administration. Uh, we'll outline additional details of how this process works when we evaluate measures for our next phase in the workflow section that we'll get to in just a few slides here. 
in phase one, we'll execute the same steps on the selected radiation um, and cross-cutting measures that are harmonized um, for, that were selected from ASTRO. Um, and as we do that, we'll demonstrate the ability to use FIRE and M-code extensions on a broader set of measures. We'll continue um, this approach through our phase 1.5, where we will again identify additional measures to continue to broaden the scope of what we, able, we are able to demonstrate here. And then phase two, where we actually develop and execute those measures. Our objective though, is to get to phase three, where we're able to work with real world data with a clinical data repository endpoint. Um, and that's where we're, we're hoping some of the community comes in. And Anthony, we can go to the next slide. Um, and so next thing we're gonna get into a little bit is like the workflow of the use case team and kind of how we go through the processes um, for identifying um, the measures um, and actually working to author and specify them. Can go to the next slide, Anthony. So this graphic kind of provides a visual workflow we follow as part of this use case. First, we look for measure stewards to submit measures to the use case team. Uh, in this case, it's been ASTO, ASCO and ASTRO. These may be existing digital measures or new measures with only text narratives. We perform an initial evaluation for measure fit and applicability and understand, ensure we understand the population criteria as well as prioritization. We do this through review of the measure with all members of the use case team, and the team has the opportunity to ask questions, provide input on priority, and identify any potential issues or concerns. Next, we go into the technical evaluation for fire feasibility. Can we actually develop this measure in fire? This is an important, this is important as we assess if the data required by the measure is supported in fire or in the in M code specifically. Apologies there, a little frog in my throat. Um, if the measure does have data elements that are not supported in either FIRE or M-code, this becomes an obstacle for us. Other measures that only require data elements that are supported by FIRE and or M-code data models specifically are able to move forward. The measures then groomed by the use case team, which includes ensuring we take a deep dive into the measured data elements, definitions, ensuring any mapping we're doing to either M-code or um, base FIRE is clinically appropriate, and ensuring any issues are addressed. From there, we move on to the technical development of the measure and develop the test data and test cases which are appropriate for the specific measure. We rely heavily within this use case on clinical input from our use case team members and ensure that the um, test data is clinically appropriate. It's a very collaborative effort as we identify the data for test testing. We continue with creating the test data um, bundles for testing of the measure using FIRE and M-code extensions. Finally, we're able to demonstrate a successful product when we move to our evaluation environment and produce measure results and reports in this environment for review by both the use case team and our clinical experts. Next slide, Anthony. Okay. So this slide illustrates the confluence of artifacts or the blueprint that our use case team uses um, as our analysis artifacts. Digital blueprints foster communication and participation for everybody in the use case, as well as ensure we capture the history of decision-making. Each measure has a specification artifact, which includes the measure description, the steward, rationale, guidance, and population criteria, as well as terminology. As we evaluate the specification, we perform a test case case needs assessment analysis, and we identify how the specifications will use M code or fire mapping. As we go through these steps with the use case team, we ensure to keep a decision log to record any decisions or rationale. We can go to the next slide, Anthony. Okay. And the final slide I'll go over just from our, our workflow perspective is our testing artifacts. So in compiling our testing artifacts, the use case team's goal is to eventually to develop a robust FIRE clinical data repository to support the testing of these quality measures through all of our phases that we've identified previously. This is a big effort without an existing CDR or an endpoint. Um, we feel a clinical data repository could provide 70 to 80% of the needed test data. Um, in addition, 
we also do develop use case specific test data and test cases that are specific to the, the very specific measure that we're currently authoring to ensure appropriate clinical coverage of test scenarios. This is a place we could really use help from the oncology community and Stephanie and Randy will get into that more in our call to action later in this presentation. So now I'll turn it over to Gail Winters from Telogen to review the technical development, testing and demonstration of what we've accomplished thus far. Hello, I'm Gail Winters. I am a integrations architect with Telogen. And I'll be talking just a little bit about some of the more, you know, hands-on um, technical work, you know, because we're limited time, I can show some things, uh, some things, you know, we are just beyond the scope of what we want to do here. But um, next slide, please, Anthony, ready. Okay, so some of this is a little bit redundant to what Becky said, but we're talking more about our development cycle here. So I think this may answer some of the questions that we're getting. And, some of the questions also will be covered in the material I have, so it's coming, I hope. So first of all, we have artifacts, as Becky described earlier, um, blueprints, if you will, for things like measure templates, where the use case community can define and work on this collaboratively, uh, put comments in, we make decision logs and so forth. You can think of the metadata and the information that we keep in the measure template as, you know, very similar to the types of metadata that you would see on, for example, the CMS measures of human readable uh, specification. That is our guide, you know, it's our brain. And without that, nothing is going, you know, anywhere else. Um, from there, we're going to, you know, again, take, you know, the initial technical evaluation and subsequent evaluations we've done. We're going to actually go out to MCODE data. And just to clarify, um, this does not mean that we're only using MCODE data. Um, generally, these are oncology measures, and the scope of what we're trying to do here is measures in that domain rather than, you know, the commodity type measures that have been around for other programs ranging from CMS to HEDIS on the payer side. These are getting into, you know, medical oncology, radiotherapy, and hopefully eventually genomics and very, very specific. So some data that we will need to meet, meet the population criterion from the measure will be coming from MCODE, and that's where we will be going through that measure specification um, for each of the population criterion. And mapping, if you will, or identifying exactly which profiles and elements that we'll be using and kind of putting together sort of, you know, a base, uh, you know, measure uh, template, if you will, for the measure itself. The testing from the community, as Becky mentioned, we've been working on putting together our own CDR. We've been gradually putting that together so that we have a repository of holistic oncology patient data spanning different domains, you know, disease, um, treatments, outcomes, and so forth that is holistic enough to cover about 70% of the needs that we will typically come up with in a measure. However, you know, as we go through these, you know, there are going to be these are complex measures for the most part, there's gonna be something in there that we're gonna to need to supplement. Or it could be the measure itself is complex enough, you know, with the different rules and so forth that we wanna set up, you know, some very specific data that was true in the two ASCO measures that we recently have been working on, um, the rules and so forth with the history of the patient treatments is very complex. And we had the community come together and specifically the clinical specialists and put together test cases that we could use to, to really, you know, have a, robust testing of this measure that it was working the way that, you know, it is supposed to. So we feel there's always going to be cases where we do have to go in and create, you know, additional data bundles um, to, to, to meet the measures. But generally, um, we want to have our CDR to the point where it's covering 80% of that, where we're not going out and having to, you know, manually script JSON bundles for every single measure we do. And then, as Becky mentioned, we would really, in the ideal situation, we could get some live data from, um, you know, an oncology system, an EMR, or payer, or something. Um, 
from there, once we have established where test cases need to be, that's where we start getting into the measure authoring and testing. We do that in a local environment, um, basically uh, VS Code with uh, CQL plugins, and those will also have test cases, but they're limited. You know, that is basically, you know, for each population uh, in the measure, you're generally going to have a negative test case, at least one negative and at least one positive test case for, for each of those measures. And that's just to get the measure working and tested, not to put together a whole, you know, um, you know, a whole boatload of data on your local development environment. Um, when we're confident that that is working the way it should, that is a point where we will do measure packaging and data bundling and for, for actually the data and get that out, you know, into the evaluator evaluation environment. Next slide, please. So this is our evaluation environment. It's an AWS um, cloud-based environment. Um, the way this flow works basically is we, we have an app or, or you could go directly to console and use S3 if you so desired and you would put your data bundle uh, up either through the app or, or through uh, the console onto S3. A trigger will fire that will kick off some Lambda that is going to actually post the, the bundle out to the fire server and repository which then will trigger the bundle that was posted getting moved out of one folder into an archive folder. And that's the front end of how the data is getting loaded to fire. And this is, you know, obviously an M-code um, enabled fire server environment and also has the, um, you know, operations CQF ruler and the operations for, you know, submitting data and evaluating measures and the various operations there, those get executed at the end of the load. So that is where your, you know, evalu evaluate measure operation, for example, would get executed. Um, the analytic uh, database is basically a transformation of the measure reports that get generated when the measure is evaluated, but it's also got additional data in it. So when I talk about building specific patient data for each of these measures, we also have, you know, a, a host of, um, you know, uh, data for things like, you know, providers, locations, organizations, um, medical specialties, that's already out there along with other data that's used to just kind of dimensionalize, um, you know, our results and perhaps support drill down or some of the other things that we may end up wanting to do as we go through and build our dashboard. So we're just now, you know, working with our, you know, first uh, few measures and we're just kind of experimenting with all this, um, you know, hopefully, you know, six months or a year from now, we'll be able to show a, nice, a really nice portfolio of measures and a beautiful dashboard, but we don't have that kind of data and the measure portfolio quite yet to get there. So just managing expectations. Um, next slide, please, Anthony. Um, so, and, and the next slide. <laughs> okay, so as far as, you know, the overarching results, um, we talked, Becky talked about phase zero. Um, the first thing we really wanted to do just to kind of, you know, pull us all together was um, prove that we could, you know, uh, basically have fire measures and access the various MCO data that we may want wanting to access, um, you know, whether that's morph uh, histology and morphology or, you know, PNS metastasis or, you know, whatever it happened to be. So even, even before this, we intelligent developed a very generic measure that really, you know, was just a, a test to see if we could go out and, you know, access the data from various uh, uh profiles and extensions and just you know make sure that all of this was going to work and then from there you know we started with the MIPS measure that really didn't need much EPCO data um we moved into medical oncology focused measures that came from ASCO around the antibiotic therapy for low and minimal medic risk of anti-neoplastic agents um, and there's two measures there they're very similar but not quite the same because um, one of them is intended where you are, you know, overreaching or prescribing um, an antiemetic for something that you really shouldn't be, whereas the other one is it's needed and you should. So in one case, uh, 
a low performance is preferred in the other case a uh, higher performance is preferred so they're not quite the same um they are two measures with uh you know two different um denominators and denominators and then the end result is um basically you know combined with the sum of both of them um in from here we're moving over to expand the portfolio into radiotherapy types of measures um coming on that side of the house having you know gotten our feet wet if you will on medical oncology we're moving over into radiation oncology and one of the measures we're doing now is um basically an astro measure which is treatment summary communication for radiation oncology and again we're using um things from the m code uh a uh, model like um, radiation course summary treatment, and we're also using things from base fire like communication. So um, we're going to continue to move on in that domain. We've got some VA measures, you know, stacked behind that, and we've sort of prioritized a uh, queue of measures that we want to develop. But overall, we want to garner industry interest in our work, and you know, get get more people interested in participating and you know serving in the use case hopefully for you know data for more input and for you know an expanded measure portfolio next slide so i'm going to show a few things now um you know again i just, there's only so much i can show but just to give you a little bit of insight into what we're getting you know, into I talked about, let me share my screen and bear with me. Hopefully I haven't gotten timed out of anything. Okay. So I mentioned that we were using, we were developing the measures themselves in a local environment, um, VS Code CQL plugin. Um, this is an example of the first anti-medic measure that we did in CQL. It's a pretty robust measure, as you can see, you know, quite a, quite a bit to it. Yeah. Yeah, we're, not, we're not seeing your screen yet. You're not. Okay. I apologize. Nope. I think it's because I was still sharing. Gail. Okay. Okay. Let's try this again. How about now? Perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah. So, this is basically I've moved over to a development environment where we are just using tooling that's available to anybody that wants it. Um, you know, uh, out on the CQI GitHubs, you can clone these um, repositories to get base fire libraries for measure development. We, of course, you know, are adding on to that and adding our own measures out there, which you won't find out there. There are not any oncology measures. So um, this, this is one of the anti-medic measures that we were just talking about. You can see there's quite a bit to it. Um, and oh sorry i'm just flipping out everywhere here <laughs> so um really all, all you would do for this and, and to use this you have to set up your test cases and, and things you know in a very certain way and within your json for your test cases you know your references have to be you know set up a certain way and pointing to each other and all the things that you know if you've worked with fire for a while you would you know expect but um, executing it is really pretty simple. Um, and this is again where we have test cases for things like, you know, a true initial or a positive initial population and a negative initial population. And what's nice about this is it's going to go through each one of these patients you have. In this case, you know, it's named, you know, denominator one negative. So I would expect this to be negative for my. Um, you know, denominator one, and it is in fact negative. Uh, and then it's just going to kind of go through through every test case that I've got in the folder, and it's going to tell me how it's scored. You know, very easy to see how it's scored on the populations. Uh, you know, I would want it to. And what's nice about it too is it's going through every definition in there. So if something is positive and we come down and we see something like all right well here in this case the denominator one is true which is what i want denominator one is positive you know i'm also going to be able to see you know what uh what basically put them in that population and again this is very fire se and jason -y, but if you're a measure developer you can see what's going on and it's it's pretty easy to do to know what's going on with your measure if it's working the way it intended so um, that's, you know, again, in a very simple nutshell, how we develop locally. 
Um, we've put together test cases for each of the population criterion for positive and negative. Um, you know, if there's multiple denominators and, you know, positive and negative for each denominator, each numerator and so forth, and measure if there's exclusions and whatever else happens to be in there. And then we test it and make sure it's working the way it's supposed to. Um, we do run into things, you know, here and there. Um, for example, this was a uh, originally a measure that was digital based in QDM, and you know there are there there happen to be one thing in QDM that it is it doesn't really quite translate to fire. Um, we did have a library workaround that covers probably you know eighty percent of that, but you know you do run into things here and there. So. You know, it's just all things to be cognizant as you go through your development cycle. So um, the way this would work is once, you know, the measure is done and tested, that's where, you know, we would go ahead and, you know, get our measure artifacts, libraries, and so forth together, translated, encoded, put together, you know, in the QMIG, uh, you know, various profile formats and get those out on a fire server with the CQF ruler so that they can, you know, be evaluated. Um, the, you know, just, just fiddling around with this a little bit, um, over in our dash, which hopefully I've gotten timed out of, you know, just to kind of look at how we are, you know, taking measure reports and, you know, for various measures and just kind of fiddling around them to see what we're doing. And again, this is just, you know, phase one where this is not going to be our end dashboard. We're going to have a slew of measures and we're going to you know, decide more about how we want that and to work. But for right now, we're just kind of seeing, you know, what can we do? We have a trend line here. But we're looking at this from a quality, you know, uh, clinical quality perspective. In this case, this measure is kind of doing what we would, you know, expect. It starts out 90%. And this, again, is one where lower performance is better. And you can see it comes kind of, you know, a slight downward slope over the course of time, a little bit of leveling out. And that's not really atypical of the sorts of trend lines I've seen, you know, in a host of quality measures and, you know, in my day and then the initiative taken on by, you know, providers or uh, risk management teams and quality improvement teams to put together innovations and, you know, get people educated. And after that, you know, the provider environment, um, you know, we're looking down at the performance detail down here, just so we can see a little bit more that there are, you know, tool tips and so forth. And we do have the measurement period um, where, where you can filter on top, but it's all interactive. So, you know, you really don't need to. So if I click on a point here, it will change my other charts and vice versa. Um, and then I can, you know, kind of undo it here and go back to where I was. So we want all our dashboards to, you know, to be that way, to basically be interactive and work together. But for right now, we were kind of looking at, okay, what is the overall measure doing? What does a trend look like? You know, what do the numbers look like? You know, what is the performance looking like over time? And then we just started feeling around saying, well, another big thing that everybody's interested in now is, you know, so socioeconomic, you know, factors in, you know, fire so far with USCDI, we've only got so many, we've got pairs, race, um, ethnicity, and, you know, lots more coming. We're hoping to capitalize, you know, as, as that becomes more available. But um, in a nutshell, we're just kind of, you know, fiddling around to see what this looks like, what we can do with it. And, you know, as we build our portfolio, our dashboards will get more and more robust. And I think that's probably all I want to share. Um, Anthony, so I'm going to go ahead and hand this back uh, to you. I'm going to hand the share back to you, I think. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, let's see. Stop share. Here we go. Okay, and then if we can go back to that last slide. Yep, let me just pull it up quickly. And here you go. So, yeah, um, some of the lessons that we learned is, you know, we came in here all really excited, you know, wanting to, you know, just burn out measures and both so forth and, you know, and then reality hit in, you know, like bundling data for M code that's really, really time consuming and error prone. And we don't have, you know, support in something like Cynthia, you know, does not support the M-code model. So it's not like we can go out there and, you know, put together a flow and plug it into the Cynthia engine and we're off and running the way we might with say US core, right? And, um, you know, it, it would be really, really nice to, you know, either have some kind of tooling support for synthetic data or to 
you know, once again, have live data that we can um, that we can use to, you know, really, you know, build up a nice big clinical data repository over time as, you know, the Codex Accelerator evolves and, you know, more and more people are getting in, that, that will be out there and it will become available for everybody, but we're still, you know, probably, you know, a couple of years away from that. So um, again, we're kind of, you know, gradually building our own and we've got, you know, clinical specialists in oncology looking at that, who really know the data and really know the workflow of oncology. And they're assisting with the putting, you know, the building of the clinical data repository. Um, the other thing that we ran into um, is just, you know, again, um, it would be really nice if we had support in a measure authoring environment, something like MADI, where the if we had under the hood, you know, per se, a model in the profile for M code and where you're currently saying what data model to use if supported, like use QI4, or use fire version 4. It would be really nice to be able to say use M code and, and to not have to, you know, be, be working with, you know, extensions, which is you know, tedious and, and kind of a pain. So that would be really great. Um, and, and then to basically be able to have your, um, you know, your QBIG artifacts, you know, built when you export, that would go a long, long way to just being able to really, uh, you know, accelerate the turnaround time on developing these measures. So we've been talking to CQI and other people and, you know, they're interested that's coming, you know, the issue we're facing now is everybody is short resourced and everybody has, you know, a zillion priorities. So we're trying to get that, um, to get that moving. And next slide. And I think that's it for me, Anthony, you can turn it over now. Thanks so much, Gail. And I will now turn it over to Randy Kudner. Oh, I think you're muted, Randy. I can unmute. Sorry, I was double muted. Sorry. Um, so Astro has been involved with Codex since uh, very early days, and we've had a lot of successes over the years. Um, but until recently, these wins have been uh, remained within the radiation oncology community. Next slide. So in May of this year, um, ONC released the USCDI Plus for Quality proposed list of data elements specific to quality measurement uh, for vendor systems. While the Codex community and the M code standard have both had interest from federal agencies, this is one of the first public acknowledgements of the work that we're doing. Eight M code data elements uh, that are shown here were included in the proposed list. And the two radiation oncology data elements represent work done in the radiation therapy treatment data codex use case um, and are also um, bridge across to the quality measure that uh, Gail was referencing earlier. So there's a lot of cross use case uh, work. Um, while this list is still proposed, it's thrilling to see the products of our work uh, have this public recognition. Um, and the idea of the MCO data elements being available in all vendor systems, I think, and, and included on this list really indicates the continu continued federal focus on data standards. Next slide. Um, in a second uh, proposal, very recent proposal, CMMI released the Clinical Data Elements Guide for the new Enhancing Oncology Model, which allowed for the use of M code for the data submission. Um, a few years ago, when CMMI released a similar guide for the proposed Radiation Oncology Alternative Payment Model, CMMI was requiring manual registry type data submission, and so um, the fact that that M codes being called out as an option is just another example of um, the quick the quick impact this initiative has been able to make. Um, Fourteen of the fifteen proposed data elements in EOM um, are already M code data elements, and um, I know there's work happening right now to fill that gap in uh, hopefully the next version of M code. Next slide. So when Astro joined MCODE and CODEX, uh, we had the subject matter expertise for radiation oncology, 
but we didn't know how to take it further. Um, we didn't know how to engage HL7, make fire standards, get in front of interoperability initiatives on a national scale. And Codex gave us the platform and the community to make huge strides. Um, so I'm gonna pass it now to Stephanie Jones from ASCO to talk about um, their experience with Codex and, and joining the initiative. Thanks, Randy. So next slide, please. So I think, you know, what you've heard on this call um, may have been a little technical for some. Um, I think uh, the, the expertise of individuals attending sort of is on a continuum. Um, I'd like to share that, you know, when Randy reached out to us to share her work, we were really excited. I kind of joked with her at the end of the call, I understood about 20% of what she said. Um, on the flip side, Yvette from our team, who's a medical informaticist, you know, she was sort of screaming through teams, oh my God, I found my people. Um, so wherever you fall, there is a space for you and you can sort of dip your toe in here. Um, we, as Gail mentioned and Becky mentioned, um, you know, if you're a measure developer like us, if you have an ECQM, it doesn't already need to be converted to fire. If you have one converted to fire, that's great. Um, but if you have an ECQM, um, we'd love for you to join the UK use case and, you know, get that into the queue. We're also really looking for partners on the data side, as Gail mentioned, right now there's, um, CDR only has synthetic data, so we want some some real world scenarios to play with. Um, if if you you just want to dip in lightly right now, you can reach out to Randy and I and have sort of an informal call. If you want something a little more formal, you can definitely reach out to Anthony or Doug. Um, the contact information is on the left. We will be sharing the slides. Next slide, please. And I just want to assure we're not going to throw you in the deep end. You know, we, as as you've kind of heard on this call, everyone's skill sets are varied. Um, it's a very supportive team. Uh, the Telgen and MITRE um, members are very technical, and we we are learning a lot from them. Um, so I, I kind of with the second graphic here, I feel like they're sort of pulling us up the mountain, so to speak, and into this stage. So depending upon where you fall, there is a space for you, and you can definitely feel free to reach out. Next slide, please. So that brings us to the end of the slide decks. As I noted before, at the beginning of the call, you heard we were recording. Um, so everyone who registered for the call will receive a follow-up email uh, with a link to the slides, to the recording. All of our contact information is here. Um, so you will be getting that follow-up information shortly. And with that, I'll turn things over to Anthony and we've got about 15 minutes left on the call for some Q&A.